You're finally here. Now help me close this, would you? In terms of pure explorable space and pure number of activities, Dragon Age Inquisition is very, very big. In the course of 85 hours, I finished the story and performed all number of side quests, yet there are huge areas I still haven't visited, tons of secrets still to be uncovered, and lots of characters I still barely know. Approaching 100 hours and I know there's so much more. I need more types of potions, I need more ways to upgrade the keep that functions as my home of operations. I haven't even reached maximum level. There still seem to be so many adventures out there waiting for me, and I crave being able to take them. The game begins with tragedy. You are the right person at the wrong time, escaping with your life even as countless others have lost theirs. Whether you live by chance or whether the Maker himself has marked you for a greater purpose isn't yet clear. But you have been marked by a magical sigil on your hand that closes rifts that now appear in the skies. This makes you both a target and a messiah figure, and the game hardly shies from the implications. You can tailor your Inquisitor in all sorts of wonderful ways using the game's intricate character creation system. You then become the Inquisitor you want to be through dialogue choices and forking gameplay options. You sit upon your throne and cast judgment on those that wronged you, and then deal with the repercussions when certain people and factions don't like your choices. And sometimes you must decide who lives and who dies, who is an enemy and who is a friend, and who leads an entire kingdom. And you will care, because the people surrounding you are so very real, so present. There are returning personalities like Leliana and Hawk, and should you carry over a save, they will recall choices you made in previous Dragon Age games. You'll probably grow to love some of these party members, as well as the other company you keep. Varric and his hairy dwarf chest return, but as you spend more time with him, his mercenary facade gives way to something approaching nobility. The Seeker Cassandra, who once interrogated Varric, and who will never be allowed to forget it, is also at your side, both soft and stubborn, always lawful, always intent on doing the right thing. Their banter is sometimes playful, sometimes tense, sometimes mysterious, and sometimes heartbreaking. There's a lot of dialogue, but every line is written and spoken with purpose. It's an obvious trap. You meet with some of these folks at the war table, where you can send agents to perform the Inquisition's work while you concern yourself with other matters. Spreading your influence and gaining power is important, as power is the currency you use essentially to buy access to new quests and areas. Dragon Age Inquisition is not one large, unbroken land in the manner of an Elder Scrolls game, but rather lots of different, semi-large, attractive lands accessible through your map. And so, off you go with your party, traversing areas both green and stormy, bucolic and war-torn. There are herbs and resources to collect out there, which you use to craft armor, weapons, and upgrades when you return to your keep. There are rifts in the sky to close, constellations to gaze at and understand via a Connect the Dot minigame, and shards to collect. Those collectibles aren't just busy work, though. There are new places and secrets to unveil. Exploration has its occasional quirks, some sound bugs, some clumsy jumping puzzles, characters occasionally popping into view, and what have you, but these foibles don't really amount to much. The combat is likely to be Dragon Age Inquisition's most divisive feature. It's fun and colorful, and if you bemoaned the loss of the tactical camera in Dragon Age 2, not only is it back, but it's back even on consoles. On one hand, the tactical camera can be kind of awkward here, sticking a little too close to things. On the other, the ability to use a single button to forward time instead of constantly pausing and unpausing is a great tweak. But unless you're fighting dragons, bosses, or venturing into rougher territory, you probably won't need the tactical camera very often should you play on medium difficulty. Most healing magic is gone, so you rely on health potions that replenish in camps and towns. Ultimately, it's a good combat system that works well in both wide open spaces and cramped caves, and it's certainly the most fluid of the Dragon Age games when you play from the usual third-person view. There are challenges out there, but nail-biting battles aren't common. Hard mode is always there if you want one, however, and there's no doubting the diversity of gameplay. There's a lot more to Dragon Age Inquisition, of course. There's the keep customization, which lets you tailor your headquarters to your liking. There's the cooperative multiplayer mode, a light but enjoyable horde-type mode with enough unlockables to keep you interested for a while, quite a bit like Mass Effect 3 in that regard. 
There are cool nooks and crannies at every turn, and robust crafting, and involved reading that can keep you busy when you aren't out squabbling with apostates and partying with the Orlesian nobles. Dragon Age Inquisition is fun and surprising, and a terrific melding of combat, storytelling, and exploration.